This episode of Spontane Nation is brought to you by our friends at CISO. CISO is an on-demand streaming comedy platform. Comedy anytime, anywhere. Check out all of the original series, quotable classics, next day late night stand-up specials, and more. CISO is only $3.99 a month, and it's ad-free. Start your one-month free trial now. Available at CISO.com, the iOS App Store, Google Play Store, Roku, Xbox, and Amazon Video. to all welcome to the mighty welcome to the humble welcome to the wasp and welcome to the bumblebee that's right I'm doing reverse psychology with stinging insects I'm glad you're here oh I hope you'll I hope you'll fly around my face all day Do it more! Hey, it feel like stinging me. Just sting me right on my eyelid. And I bet those... I almost called them dumb insects, but that's not fair. We just want different things is all. Sometimes I want to sit down with wasps and I want to say, look, there are so fewer threats to you than you think there are. Try to see it through my eyes. You're flying around like a nut. I don't have a clear idea of what your flight path is. I don't know what you're all about. If you guys just flew in a straight line, you're just like, oh, I gotta get at that soda can. And you just went like, here we go. Just gonna make a, <laughs> took away a phrase, a beeline for it. Came up with that, by the way. And, uh, that's not uh, what we think it means. You would think a beeline is like a straight line. They're all over the place, these guys. Is it because they're mad because we called them bumblebees? Hey, there's a case there. Uh, <laughs> if somebody, let's say. I was never supposed to fly. Like, my body was not built to fly, and it defied science and physics that I flew in the air. And somebody was like, Haha, you're like bumbling around in the air. <laughs> hey, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm flying. <laughs> You're not supposed to fly either, but you're on the motherfucking ground. <laughs> it's worth my death to sting you to teach you a lesson. <laughs> Why don't we have a thing like that where it's like a last ditch? All right, looks like... <laughs> <laughs> looks like I'm down to my very last option which is to annoy this thing and die. <laughs> what? Just fly away, stupid! <laughs> Bumblebee doesn't like if you blow on it. Oh, they don't like that. <laughs> well, pardon me. If I was a little bumblebee with a bunch of bristly hairs and I landed on someone's shoulder, a terrified person I might add, <laughs> and they blew on me to try to get me to go away, I'd go away. <laughs> I wouldn't be like, that's it! <laughs> My last act on this earth 
will be to insert a part of my body that will drag out other parts of my body when I leave it in this thing that I, is so big, I can't even get the entire scope of it because of how small I am, but totally worth it. I wish there was one of those body switching movies where it was me inside a bumblebee and a bumblebee inside of me. Because I think we would both learn a lot of stuff. But I bet the bumblebee, bumblebee, blah, 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 blah. bumblebee's final revenge. Very hard to get worked up and use the term bumblebee and keep talking after that. Here's what I think it is. It's so adorable that I think my brain just wanted to stay there for a second. It was like, "Uh uh-uh, no more words. Let's just hang on bumblebee for a while. No wonder we named that tuna after it. I don't know what bees have to do with tuna. Like the mermaid, that's a tenuous connection. <laughs> but bumblebee tuna, like did the mermaid people get there first? That's Starkist? Who's the, who's the mermaid people? Is that Starkist? What? Starkist is oranges. What is it? Wait, Sunkist is oranges. But chicken of the sea, is that the name of the tuna? Boy, oh boy. I thought it was just like the jingle. The jingle from when I was a child, I don't think they use it anymore, is ask any mermaid you happen to see, what's the best tuna? Chicken of the sea. Then they would have a mermaid there on the label. I guess they thought we were going to ask the can. Sorry, I'm a little bit smarter than a oh, bumblebee. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Thompson. <laughs> this is a show where I steeple my fingers when I want to tell you information. <laughs> On this program, I will invite a special guest onto the program to have a free-form chat with me inspired by a blind question from our previous episode's guest. Then, I have a bunch of improviser pals come out. We do a narrative improv that is one continuous story based on the details of my conversation with the aforementioned special guest. And it is all scored on piano by Mr. Eben Schletter. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very excited to introduce to you my improviser friends from the world of Make Pretends. And a bit of a theme here tonight because they are all my co-stars on the CISO original program, Bajillion Dollar Properties. Welcome to the stage, Dan Adute, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Hugs, hugs, hugs. Please, Dan, have a seat. Thank you. Dan, how are you doing? I don't usually get owls, so I'm doing very well. But you deserve them. Really? You think so? I think so. Really? Do you not think so? I don't think so. Why do you not think so? I have a deviated septum, which... Uh... Say no more. <laughs> the most disgusting type of septum. Uh, it's completely deviated. Do you, have what you a th- horrible name, deviated. Oh, yeah. Like, it's not the... No, we're going to take a, a, a... We're going to take a turn. I feel like... We're going to deviate like... from what your nose should look like. <laughs> But it doesn't affect your, your outward appearance, does it? My outward appearance? Yeah. Well, it's kind of bulbous. <laughs> but what, what's, tell me what's happening inside that makes it a deviated septum. Well, you know how most of you guys have two holes that come out like this. Right. But the Jews in the audience, it, <laughs> it's kind of like a, like a swiggly sl- slide at the water park. 
So uh, how many holes are we talking about? Then? <laughs> are you saying you have more or less no. nostrils than you're supposed to? <laughs> well, it comes out the same. We have the two. Actually, one of them, this, the right nostril doesn't work at all. It's a vestigial structure at this point. So you could keep stuff in there if you wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> I would cheat on tests when I was a child. <laughs> the little scroll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, does it cause you problems with breathing? It does. Um, I, I wear breathe the, these strips when I go to bed. Yes. Breathe right, they're called. Breathe right, yes. Um, they're not a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wear the breathe right strips when I go to bed sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's... Uh, you know, it's one of those problems where it's not that big, where there's like a support group for it, but it kind of sucks. Have you thought about having a surgery to correct this thing? I have. I have thought about it. And I actually, I had a mini surgery, believe it or not. I'll this believe was. it. <laughs> why, why would I be skeptical of that? <laughs> this, was, <laughs> this was about 10 years ago, before uh, I had health insurance, mm -hmm. and... Uh, I got into a fight. I lost the fight. <laughs> and uh, my uncle is an ear, nose, and throat surgeon. Sure. So, uh, <laughs> so he, I was like, I don't have insurance. He's like, all right, well, come into the hospital and we'll sneak you in. <laughs> and, and he was like, uh, just, uh, we, don't, we have to do it real quick. So just kind of take this pill, which is like a quick, it's just gonna sedate you a little bit, but not really. And then he basically, the surgery, I'm like, oh, they have these nice tools that they're going to use. And he had like, they were like needle nose pliers from like Home Depot, like with the orange plastic and just like stuck it in there like, all right, straight Whoa. now. I'm like, Whoa. this is what they teach you in med school? Like just put the pliers up and make it straight? You get what you pay for. You get... Dan a dude, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. I think I dismissed you too soon. I have, I have more questions about this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Were there, what happened after the, quote, surgery, end quote? Uh, well, it's funny you should ask. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, had a stand-up show that night. <laughs> and it was in, it was uh, in Delaware. Uh-huh. And The first uh, date. Yeah. And as some of you have done, they, they put a lot of caulking in your nose when you get to the surgery, a lot of caulking, and it's very uncomfortable, and uh, you sneeze a lot. And anyway, the uh, surgeon, my uncle, said, you can't fly on a plane because of pressure problems, mm -hmm. so I couldn't get on a plane. So my mom drove me to the show, and uh, I did the show, and then when, you know, kids after were like, you want to come party with us? I was like, no, I'm good. I went back to the Holiday Inn Express, and my mom and I watched Sex in the City. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got the missing piece of the puzzle. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tim Boltz. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. It's good to see you. It's good to see you, Tim. Please sit down. I will. Tim. Paul. What's going on with the insides of your nose? Um, the insides of my nose, are, they're good. They're, yeah, they're good. Um, for those uh, here in the audience tonight and for anyone listening at home who happens to be Jewish, I'm probably the least like a Jewish person in appearance. Uh, I have very Germanic ancestry. I am unfortunately not Germanic at all. I am 100% French. So when people mistake me for German, I am very injured. Emotionally. Sure. Does this happen a lot? It does. Look at me. And, but also, <laughs> your last name doesn't sound particularly French. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. My last name is Baltz. It's actually, you know, sounds very German. <laughs> so so I understand the confusion, and I kind of go through the same cycle anytime people bring this up. And I'm like, yes, yes, yes. I'm not. I'm actually, I'm actually a dual French citizen. Meaning uh, French and Canadian? <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm. 
French and Belgian. Oh, oh. <laughs> That's the worst thing, right? Uh, French and Belgian is uh, the second worst. French Canadian is the worst. <laughs> to, <laughs> to, a, to a French person, that's, that's the worst. Now, I, I'm half French. My mother is French, so I have a, I have a, I have a uh, French passport, thanks to her American passport, because I, I grew up here. That's right. Yes. Were you born in the United States? Yes, I was. I was born in one of the most American places, which is Joliet, Illinois. There we go. What? <laughs> Someone wooed that? <laughs> wow. Are you from Joliet, person? <laughs> it's just a weird pocket of air that always releases anytime someone says Joliet. Oh. Woo! You know, also the theater, like all theaters, is haunted. Ah, yes. Yeah, by a former steel mill worker from Joliet, Illinois. <laughs> That's just, right. It's a yeah. weird theater ghost. <laughs> yeah. That's a weird one. <laughs> Always their first time in a theater. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> this is a bunch of queers. Yeah. What is yeah, this? They put makeup on their faces. I'll tell you what work is. Not this. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I come from. <laughs> now, so your your both your parents are French? No, just my mother. My and father, your father is. My father is American. He was born and raised in Joliet, Illinois. My mother came when she was... There's that ghost again. Oh, look, I'm getting, getting goosebumps. Yeah. Uh, my father was born and raised there. My mother came to the U.S. when she was 29 or 30 and, to be a Montessori teacher. So then you were not, in fact, 100% French. Did, had I asserted that? Yes, you had. I had? Yes, you I thought I said half French. You said 100... Did he not say 100% French? <laughs> I did? My courtroom. Oh. <laughs> we can fix it in post, right? <laughs> but you have, do you have two passports? I do, yes. That's exciting. Yes. The American one is blue. Yes. What color is the French one? The color of these curtains. Red? Yes. <laughs> do you not know the names of colors? <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> but I can point to stuff with the best of them. Do you, can you identify an orange? Mm. This, there's not one on stage Not right here, now. no. No, then I can't, I can't. Well, are you looking for the color? Because I'm talking about the fruit. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, so the fruit orange yes. is the color orange? It's also orange. Well, all right. I came here to learn one thing. <laughs> what are the laziest fruit names? Orange, number one with a bullet. Yes, yeah. Um, blueberry, not great. No. <laughs> blackberry, coming in number three. Oof, yeah. <laughs> so you could make a case for blackberry as the, the laziest named fruit. Ras raspberry, I... I don't, that's a good one, I think. That's a good one. Strawberry is a good one because you have to think about one. it a little bit. Dragon fruit, got to be up in the top ten. <laughs> yeah. Whoever named that was thinking of something else when they named it. <laughs> Do you think they were thinking, I bet dragons would like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's the one? Oh, Dorian is the one that stinks, right? Oh. <laughs> Did someone bring one here? That was the Joliet ghost judging that fruit, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh. A Dorian. Oh. This I'm... guy doesn't sound very blue collar. This, this guy? Oh. Oh. A Dorian. <laughs> Not where I'm from, Joliet, <laughs> Illinois. Mm -mm. <laughs> Just retired from my steel mill job. <laughs> what a bore. Well... <laughs> Which sporting teams do they root for in Joliet? They root for the Chicagoland area teams. It's predominant, it's, it, it is southwest of Chicago by about an hour, past right. the suburbs. So they do root primarily for the White Sox, but I grew up as a Cubs fan in enemy territory. How was that? <laughs> Agonizing. 
it's difficult because you think, well, well just root for each other. You're, you're not even in the same league. One's American League, one's National League. You almost never compete against one another. You'll literally almost never make it to the World Series, both of you. So just root for each other, you know? Spoken like a true dual citizen. <laughs> Tim Balls, ladies and gentlemen. That was good. I was going to say Cubs fan. No. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Tawny Newsom! Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Oh, punched you in the stomach. Good. Please, Tawny, sit down. Thank you so much. Tawny, how are you? I'm great. Where are you from? Oh, okay. I spent half my life in Chicago, so that, yep. And guys, guys, guys. This is, this is when he starts to get mad about it. Um. I, I, there's one thing. I try, I, I let it go as much as I can. But the cheering for places <laughs> drives me insane. Okay, go ahead. And the other half of my life was in an unincorporated territory outside of the bustling metropolis of Vacaville, California. So I claim Chicago. <laughs> but you grew up in the video game Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> you had to go on side missions. Yeah, I mean, know your audience. <laughs> No, it's a prison town, and my mom was a, a, a prison oy, guard. Oy, oy, oy. What? Your mom was a prison guard? Yeah, still is. She's a captain. And uh, wh why that face? I, I, well, this is not, I don't meet people every day who have prison guard relatives. Oh, well, she is. She always has been. Uh, before that, she was a hairstylist. Sure. <laughs> see, see now, so. this, this seems more like a mom occupation. Oh, how dare you? <laughs> Yes, all women. Um, <laughs> she, uh, she, no, don't applaud that. That was a terrible drop. Um, she, uh, she went to beauty school. She dropped out of high school. Mm. She went to beauty school. She dropped out of beauty school. Beauty school dropout. I did it before you could. <laughs> and then she had me at like 19 and was like, I need health insurance. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather was a prison guard and he was like, come work here. <laughs> Wow. Which is an insane thing to say to a 19-year-old, beautiful blonde woman of five foot three. <laughs> yes, all she women. She did though. great, but yes, all women though. Yeah. Um, but she did she great. She did great. She still is. Yeah, she's a captain. What is the, the ca being a captain? Does that mean she doesn't have to be in? amongst the prisoners quite so much? Uh, now she has retired to, before she retired to like, so out of, uh, out of uniform. So she mm -hmm. worked at headquarters and then she was running an IT project. And now she's kind of like a um, consultant. But yeah, when she was a captain, she was still in the, in the trenches. Are they trenches? They're not. I understand what you mean though. Thank you I don't think much. they're literal trenches. They shouldn't be nowadays. <laughs> I hope they reform that prison, if that's the case. That might be a chain gang. That's job seem... <laughs> I think you're right. That job seems very scary to me. Probably. But, I mean, yeah, no, I think so. She never seemed scared when I was a kid. She seemed, like, tough and tired and yelling at me about doing my chores, so... Would she ever make you spend the night in a little box? No, no, she didn't. I did lead a family night, though. I led, like, visitor night at the prison a few times. What does that require? So family night is when, like, people's families of the different guards get to come and, like, see where their family member works. And my mom was like... Wow, wow, yeah. wow. That's quite an invitation to get. Oh, it's pretty cool. And it's always at night for some reason. I'm like... <laughs> sure. Hey, good news, everybody. Yeah. You can finally come visit that prison where I work. <laughs> <laughs> in the dead of night. <laughs> Don't worry, the industrial spotlights will light the way. <laughs> uh, yeah, and she was like, okay, I don't want you inside, inside the prison. And I was like, cool boundaries, Ma, I'm 12. <laughs> but she goes, there's a, uh, there's a shuttle that goes around the outside of it. So she's like, we'll both get on the shuttle. And she's like, I'll leave the, sh the external tour. And so she'd, we'd sit on the shuttle and she'd like leave the tour. And then inevitably, every family night, she would get called because she was also a member of the CERT team, which is their internal SWAT team. This is... Oh, sure. You know. 
because sometimes you need a five foot three blonde with a battering ram and like tactical gear to rush into a stabbing, right? Well, send her in first because I'm sure she had an impeccable hairdo. Oh yeah, <laughs> she definitely did. So she leaves. Hey, me. remember a minute ago when she was in beauty school? <laughs> They're, they're just trying to track my insanely wandering story. Don't blame them, Paul. I'm tracking it. Well, you're, you know me. <laughs> but I'm learning things that I did not know. So she would leave and then I would give the tour. So I'm 12, wearing one of her suits, BT dubs, don't worry about it. I would wear her little like paisley, crazy shoulder padded jacket because it was like 1994. And I'd wear her little like heeled uh, ankle boots. <laughs> And I'd stand there on the tour bus and I'd be like, this area is known as the no man's land. (laughs) (laughs) Only level two inmates are able to cross this area. (laughs) A level two inmate has to have a minimum sentence and no violent offenses while incarcerated. anyone ever say why is a child giving us this tour (laughs) they should have (laughs) but no one questioned it no because they all had their kids with them they were on the tour like (laughs) but they weren't given the tour i don't think there were i mean it was all so blurry none of it should have been happening so i think they were just like yeah she knows her stuff Do you think the other kids were thinking, am I going to get pressed into service at this prison? (laughs) Do I work here now? Oh, I don't know. I was such a little snob. I didn't talk to the other kids. I was like, I'm in charge. My mom gave me a job. You're just eating a push pop. (laughs) (laughs) Tony Newsom, you're just eating a push pop. Thanks. Are you going to hug me? Yeah, sure. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a little break. When we return, you will meet our special guest. So make your peace with it. (laughs) Oh, guess what? The Now Hear This Podcast Festival. It's happening in Anaheim, California, October 28th through the 30th, and Spontanea Nation will be there. You got to come see us do the show live. We are doing this. We haven't done this since the uh, LA Podfest last year. It will be the studio version done in front of an audience. It's very rare. And guess what? Show Sunday, October 30th. There are single day passes available. So maybe you can only make it on that Sunday to see my show. The only show you need to see it all ever. Now you can do that. You don't have to buy passes for the whole weekend and then sit there on Friday and Saturday saying, I'm bad with money and my mom and dad will yell at me. You can just go Sunday, see Spontanea Nation. I guess by this logic, you could also just go the other days. And see those shows? I mean, if that's logic, then we're in the world of topsy-turvy cloud cuckoo land. So go to nowhearthisfest.com to get tickets and info about hotels, transportation, ticket options, and more. Okay? There's all all kinds of shows are going to be there. The Brilliant Idiots, The Canon, Combat Jack Show, Comedy Bang Bang, Cracked, Criminal, Crybabies, Dear Prudence, Dinner Party Download, Doug Loves Movies, NPR is Embedded, Found, The Gist, Hello from the Magic Tavern, Hollywood Handbook, How Did This Get Made, NPR's How I Built This, The Incomparable, I Was There Too, Improv for Humans. Jordan, Jesse, go. The Longest Shortest Time, Lore. Mark Marin, WTF. It says that in parentheses like that. NPR's Pop Culture Happy Hour. Tannis, The Memory Palace, The Moth. Never Not Funny. Super Ego, with special guest Lauren Lapkus, and 
more. That seems like a lot. <laughs> Are there more? I might be wrong. But, of course, Spontaneous Nation. Come see us in Anaheim. And I love you. Hey, friends, if you will be in the Los Angeles area Saturday, October 1st, you simply must come see Spontaneous Nation live at Largo at the Coronet. These live shows are always fun, and there's still tickets available for the October 1st show. Saturday, October 1st, our improvisers will be from Bajillion Dollar Properties, my pals, Ryan Gall, Mandel Mon, and Drew Tarver. They've all been on the show before, and they've all been in my hearts since I met them. And our special interview guest is Horatio Sands. These shows are a lot of fun. There's always stuff that you see live that you will not see that you will not hear on the podcast. You're not going to see any of this on the podcast. I'm not trying to trick you <laughs> with words. There are things we do in the live shows that you don't get to hear on the podcast because they are cut the fuck out. So come live and see them in person. There are amazing posters for sale. Uh, the posters that the talented Nathan Diffie makes for every single show. And you should check those out if you haven't. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Largo is a great place to see a show, and it's been my home for many years. So I do hope you will come out to see this show. Go get your tickets at paulftompkins.com slash live. Welcome back to Spontanea Nation. We didn't go anywhere, and neither did you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to bring out our special guest. This gentleman you will recognize from his role. I don't know why I'm delivering it like this. I say to you, you will recognize this gentleman from his role on FX Access. You're the worst. Please welcome Desmond Borges. <laughs> Desmond, hello. Thank all oh, huggles for oh, every lot hugs. Please have a seat. Oh, I'll take this one here, yeah. Desmond, thank you very much for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. This is the first time we're meeting, is that correct? Uh, well, we met earlier, but this is the first official time in front of... Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh. No, it's like showbiz stuff. Oh, my bad. Of course it's not before. Because it, it gives them a thrill, you know what I mean? Right, 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 right. <laughs> The no, wine's yeah, sure, hold on, hold on. Hey, ah, uh, there we go. Oh, it's the whole rewind. All right, then we're good. All right, cool, cool. Desmond, thanks for being here. Now, we've never met before, is that correct? No, we have not, Paul. <laughs> but you, this is not your first time in this theater. Oh, no. Uh, no, no, it is not, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> You were here when this place was still just called the Coronet, before yeah. it was Largo. I didn't even know it was that. It was just a building that I was told to come to to perform for for agents and managers when I was graduating from acting school. So. But the Girls, Girls, Girls Life sign is still the exact same right That's across right. the street. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you knew you were home. Yeah. That was, ah. you, you were graduating from DePaul University, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this was the showcase for actors, and so you did, what would, like, what kind of a performance did you have to do? You either did, like, a, a monologue or a duet scene, and then there was, like, music intertwined with it, some people sang, some people didn't, some people group sang, there was, like, uh, you know, it was a really uneventful hour, hour and a half or so, probably. <laughs> But was it was it meaningful to you at the time? Because it was. You know, oh the yeah, idea it was, was great. You know, I mean, it's like kind of like your first introduction to the business world. Except here in LA, no one fucking came to it. So there was like. <laughs> that oh, was it's like this show. Yeah, because <laughs> it's like it's like late in the you know uh, audition sort of season. It's like in June or whatever. So like the six people who came, like you would see like our flyers like in the trash, like as they. Oh. Left. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm, I'm still working, you know. <laughs> He's doing all right. <laughs> He's doing, it worked out all right for him. Yeah, yeah. I just had to start not in Los Angeles. What did you, where did you start? <laughs> um, Chicago, Minneapolis for a year at the Children's Theater Company. Sure. The, yeah. That's a big deal. It's a huge deal. That children's, guys, it's a big deal. Seriously. <laughs> that Children's Theater Company, they get nominated for Tonys. Every year, almost. Every year, almost. Yeah, yeah. And what... <laughs> Oh, what did you do for your showcase? 
Oh, uh, I did a scene from uh, Tape by Stephen Belber. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, good, good choice. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'm a very cultured person. <laughs> they did make it into a movie starring Ethan Hawke and Uma Thurman. Oh, I kind of remember. That. And another guy whose name I can't remember. Tawny, do you remember the name? And you guys remember? Woo! Woo! Joliet. <laughs> His name was Joliet. <laughs> Desmond, I have a question for you. Yeah. Submitted by our previous episode's guest. Are you curious as to the identity of our previous episode's guest? Oh, okay. Can, can I take it? Uh, can I guess? You may. <laughs> was it Rachel Bloom? It was not Rachel Bloom. Damn. That's, that's, uh, that's it. That's all I got. Would you like to know who it was? Yeah, please. Well, then I would direct you and the listener to the Spontaneous Nation archives at howl.fm. <laughs> Hours of listening pleasure await you. Desmond, here is the question submitted to you by our previous episode's guest. That question is, who was your childhood hero? Are they still? <laughs> that is some heavy shit. Yeah, yeah. Shh. I'm sweating already. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. Um, you know, I, there, there, there were many. Um, uh, childhood, when, when, originally when I, I, you know, my family makes fun of me because I watched three movies on repeat from the ages of like four to seven, movies I shouldn't have been watching. They were uh, Three Amigos, uh, La Bamba, and Prince. And then I found a broken guitar um, in our alley in Logan Square in Chicago uh, after I first saw Prince and I learned all of the music um, to it and thought that it was an amazing love story at the age of four. What was, I'm sorry, and, the movie uh, was called Prince? Oh, no, 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 Purple Rain. Purple Rain. My bad, my bad, <laughs> my bad. But I then, missed a Prince movie. <laughs> But a third uh, Prince movie had surfaced. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Prince 3. <laughs> the Return of Apollonia. <laughs> uh, so you found, was it an acoustic guitar or was it an electric guitar? Yeah, no, it was acoustic. It was right. acoustic. I was four. I don't think I would have been a pick up, uh, be able to like actually physically hold. I mean, I was a stacked four-year-old, but, you know. <laughs> uh, no, and then I would perform the entire Purple Rain soundtrack on my dining room table for my family. So I guess it, I would have to say Prince from very early on. Wow. Yeah. A little, little kid. What was it, do you remember, what was it about Prince that captivated you so much? Oh, I, I just thought it was like the most amazing love story I had ever seen. <laughs> Up to that point. Seriously. My, my, <laughs> yeah, you asked my mother, you asked your, what, tell, tell me what Desmond thought about Prince. Oh, he just... Oh, he used to say, Mom, they really love each other. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize to my wife who's listening to this now. Why? Well, because if I thought that's what love is, she's in for, you know, <laughs> some shit. <laughs> She's gonna throw that hoop earring at me one day. <laughs> you know, oh wee, oh wee, oh, you know, just kind of go through the uh, more staying the time or just kind of creeping through in the back. So you were a romantic little kid. Yeah. Those kind of stories. So, so <laughs> Purple Rain, La Bamba. Yeah. Which is also the heavy love story. Heavy love in that. story, yeah. yeah. And very, of course, tragic ending. Yep. Um, and Three Amigos. Three Amigos. <laughs> I wanted to be Ned Niederlander. That was Martin Short? Yeah, it was Martin right? Short. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think we would have fit into the same costume around that time. So I think that I think my eyes my eyes were already on the prize. Like how can I just get in It's a sweater, you know? I mean <laughs> what, do you, what were this what were what was like the overlap with all these movies, do you think? Hmm. Because these were like heavy rotation for you. Yeah, and we were poor, so I think it was probably the only tapes we had in the house. There you go. You know? A little goes a long way. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, this is way back before there was any sort of internet. You know, my mom used to chase me around the house with like that 87 foot cord that was connected to the, the kitchen phone. Sure. Yeah. Down the steps, up and down. Yeah. What did you, who became your heroes as you got older? Uh, uh, John Leguizamo, uh, mm -hmm. big time. Big time. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like when, when I finally, uh, thank you. Um, 
I know. What I'm you, glad, I'm what glad do you, you do agree. With that I'm applause? glad you agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> Third party applause. Yeah, yeah. I see, I see that. I see that. I see that. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was, you know, I was thinking Totoro, but leg like, was almost there. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, but you know, it's like it's it's kind of weird because like when I think about work ethic, like growing up in Chicago, like no one had better work ethic than Michael Jordan. So if we want to talk about like who I looked up to for work ethic, it was like it was him. He was the the, the person, you know, I mean, the, the story about him not making the basketball team when he was in high school, which is false. He didn't just he didn't start varsity. He averaged like 40 points, 12 rebounds and eight assists on junior varsity as a sophomore. And then, you know, became but, you know, it's kind of like his story there. There were things he had to overcome, you yes, know, yes, he had to overcome the, you know, Mark Price and the Cavaliers and Larry Bird. And, the, and but like you, you could just see it along the way. And even when he retired and then came back and won another three peat, like that work ethic just kind of took him to a whole new level. So I, I it's kind of weird to say you looked up to Michael Jordan for that, but you definitely did. But when it came to like performance aspects, man, as soon as I saw Freak by John Leguizamo, like I just like I knew like that's I that that's where I belong. Somewhere within that mm-hmm. that world. Ooh, I'm hot over here. Huh? <laughs> hey Mike. Uh, <laughs> Find me a drink first. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, you know, and 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 the and the way John did it, you know, coming from a very um, lower lower middle class urban family in the city, going through the theater world, then kind of writing his own stuff, and then kind of like parlaying it into everything else, and just bringing that sort of, you know. Um, uh, urban centric sort of you know I mean he's a hustler you know he's like mm-hmm. a modern day hustler and I think that's probably what I learned a lot as a kid is in order to do really anything you gotta hustle do you feel like you're a hustler I'm a hustler <laughs> yeah do you feel yeah. that still oh yeah yeah you have to be I mean I don't I don't have to hustle in the same way that I did like 10 years ago but um, um, okay funny story you wanna hear this yeah, yeah. sure uh, <laughs> So this stays just between us and everyone at Earwolf, right? Um, I, was, I was valeting cars in Chicago at this place called the Hilton Garden Inn. And they had this thing called a transponder. And that's the thing that you, you know, do that before Easy Pass. It's, an e- it's basically Easy Pass to get right. you in and out of the parking garage. So around us, there were places like Buco de Peppo and uh, uh, Kenneth Cole and, you know, P.F. Chang's or whatever. And all of these people would park and it would cost them $8. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I quickly realized that when you have the transponder, there's no ticket going into the machine or out, so they don't really track it. Because if you have a car within the hotel, you can come in and out as much as you want, as long as the transponder's taking you in and out. So I told them I would charge them $5 a head to take their cars out. So they would take tickets that would just stay and ne- never be returned and then I would bring their cars out me and my valet guys for five dollars a head like that quickly spread all over Michigan Mile in Chicago and we would have we would make like anywhere between like five and seven hundred dollars in tips from just taking people's cars out throughout a 24-hour period <laughs> but now you yeah. had to do some of the cars the regular way oh yeah yeah but, yeah yeah no of course but who but there must have been if this spread yeah Everyone Somebody fucked this up, right? I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I worked there for three years, and then I bounced, and the, 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 the racket was still going the entire time I was there. <laughs> I just don't, th- I, you know, and that, and that just makes you think, like, what, what the hell are the people doing who own that garage? They don't, like, look at their, their QuickBooks, or exactly. what the fuck, man? <laughs> you know? But, I, you know, like, I didn't care. Like, I was, like, 20, 21, 22 years old. I was just still finishing school, and it was a, you know, really nice way to have extra money in my pocket and you know whatever <laughs> was it, when you think about it now do you feel like oh i did something that was bad or i nah. i just i did what I- <laughs> <laughs> they, no they charge a stupid stupid hourly and overnight amount right. to park your car in a structure you know like right. I, I, I no i don't you know <laughs> I mean, they, if they come back after me now, it'll be fucked, but <laughs> I don't know what the statute of limitations are for, for hustler hijinks in Chicago, Illinois. I bet you're in the clear. Yeah. I bet yeah, you're in the clear. I'm, Rom would have my back. <laughs> you know. <laughs> of all people, yes. Yeah. No yeah. doubt. No. Who are your heroes today? Hmm. 
Well, you know, uh, uh, John Luke was almost still a pretty big hero for me. I've been uh, recently more in touch with him as I've gotten older because we've met all kind of along the way. Um, and so it's great to hear from him. Um, the first time you met him, yeah. were you able to keep your cool? Oh, hell yeah. He was presenting me with an award at the Theater World Awards. Well, that makes it easier. Yeah, right? <laughs> so, like, <laughs> so, like, I was like, yo, what's up? No, but I walked out. I was, I was, it was funny because they, they were also giving um, the, uh, 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 what was the play that Bobby Cannavale and uh, uh, Rosie did and Chris Rock, um, the motherfucker with the hat. Yes. So they were also getting awarded. And so I was back there just like listening to Bobby and Chris just kind of like go off each other and like Chris Rock's funny as shit, you know, just like all, all day, all night. Right. And so like, I didn't hear him say my name and they, and Chris was like, the fuck out there, man. And I was like, Oh shit. All right. So like I run out and then John and I are wearing the exact same fucking suit. <laughs> and the first thing I said to, we, at the same time, we go to shake hands. We're both like, nice suit <laughs> and like that was like you know the first the, you know like the first time we met and then we hung out and talked kind of backstage and then kind of since then we've done like a couple of like little panels together over at NYU and stuff and it's you know it's just he's he's amazing man it really is of the times that you've met what percentage of those times were you wearing the exact same clothes <laughs> twice I guess now uh, <laughs> Desmond Borges, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, I said it the other way. Desmond Borges. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take another break. During that break, we will procure a location for our improv from Desmond. And when we return, we're going to do that improv. All this and nothing else when Spontane Nation returns. Paul F. Tompkins here, out on the street to talk to people about washing dishes. Sir, do you wash dishes? Absolutely. Do you wash them every day? Uh, I try, yeah. What's the worst part about washing dishes? Um, just, like, how dirty they get sometimes. Okay, but that's not, that's not the part about washing dishes. That's about making dishes dirty. Oh, I guess, uh, like, the detergent dries out my hands and... Uh... Oh, you're a little baby? Well, I don't know. That's my... You're a little baby. Yeah, I'm a little baby. What if I told you there was a solution to this? I would love that. Yeah, it's called growing the fuck up, you little baby. Oh, nice. Can I get that in stores? What are you talking about? I'm insulting you. Oh, well, I, sorry. I tried to throw it back. Ooh, you got me, I think. Well, I'd like to know more. I mean, there are a lot of problems with washing dishes. Go to the Library of Congress and ask someone. Oh, all right. Uh, walk, 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 walk. Knock, knock, knock. Up, uh, close today. <laughs> Bad luck. Well... If you're listening to this, go wash your dishes. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Oh, I need that book. God damn it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to Spontaneous Nation. Ladies and gentlemen, we have procured our in our information that is technically true <laughs> from Desmond Borges that information is the location for our improv and that location is about to be revealed now just so as you know when we're doing our improv in order to move us about in time we use three sound effects okay to transport us from time to time if we are in a scene and we're going to cut to a scene happening at the exact same time, concurrent, a meanwhile, if you will, you will hear this cut to sound effect. It's a red button, as if to say, stop, what's happening over there? <laughs> Let's say we're going to travel backwards in time for some reason. Let's somebody's having a memory. We're learning how something came to be. We will hear this flash back sound effect. Nice. <laughs> That's a yellow button, as if to say, slow down. Slow even further down. Go so slow, we're going backwards. <laughs> That's as slow as you can get. 
Let's say we're going to return from the past to the present or travel into the mysterious future. You will hear this flash forward sound effect. That's a green button, as if to say, let's go forward into the future. Thanks. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to reveal our improv location provided to us by Desmond Borges, and that location is... Donut Factory! We take you now to Donut Factory! Hi, I'll be giving the tour of the factory. Glaze the donut. <laughs> Say hi to Johnny. He's the glazer. Hey, what's up? I glaze. Hey. Uh, very cool. <laughs> is it, kid? This is the only job I could get. Is that cool? Oh, I'm I'm a full-blown adult. This is a child. <laughs> The, the child is the person giving the tour. I'm an adult who paid for this tour, wondering why this child is giving the tour. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late. Oh, that's oh. all right. Did I miss much of the tour? Well, yeah. You missed the sprinkles over there. That's Felix. He's my dad. Oh. Hi, hey, Dad. I have a question. Yeah. Why are you dressed exactly like me? Wait a second. You were here last week. This is the second time we've dressed the same. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure you're mistaken. I've never taken this tour before, honestly. <laughs> you said that this was the first time that we were taking this tour. Yes, I thought like we just got married. This would be a great tour to go on. And you know what? Let's go outside and walk back in and pretend Let's it's the first it time that we've okay. done it. Okay. All right. So anyway, over here, this is where we glazed I'm the so, dog. I'm sorry. What? Should I still be late again, or...? Oh. Yeah, 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 you'll, yeah, be, you'll right. be late again, yeah, okay. okay? We skipped the sprinkles. Okay, okay. here we are, the glazers. <laughs> can, we get the, can we get the piano you were playing when we walked in the first time? <laughs> Fact. We have a piano player in the Donut Factory! That's why it's called Keys Donuts! Well, here we go. Okay. <laughs> this is where we glaze the donuts. Originally, you said this is Johnny. God Blair. damn it, you're right! <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, can I just be in it from the beginning? Just hang out. We got All right, this. Okay. We got it. I just feel like... What? I just feel like you're... It's taking a while to remember all the details. Can I just be in it from the beginning is all I'm saying. Is that okay with you, Johnny? I was enjoying the workshopping, but I understand we need to expedite it, so. I'll, 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 I'll stay out. I'll stay out. Okay. Just give me the high sign when it's time for me to come in. Okay. All right, I'll keep you. Cool. Just give me the high sign. Yes. All right. Hey. Um, this is where we glaze the donuts. Say hi. This is Johnny who glazes. Fuck! <laughs> You screwed up so many times that by the time it gets to whatever I'm supposed to say, I'm, I'm light years away from knowing what that is. All right. Oh. What's important is you're a full-grown man who for some reason knows less about how donuts are made than this tiny child. <laughs> and your love is late. So come on yeah. in. You're late. Hi, sign. Hi, Hi sign. sign. I'm sorry I'm late. Okay. What did I miss of the donut tour? Oh. Well, you missed the sprinkle section, which is where Felix works. Felix is my dad. Hi, Felix. Oh, hey, son. How you doing over there, man? Oh, hey, dad. Whoa, hey. this is new. He wasn't there the first time we ran this. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I was, uh, I, I, was, I was in the bathroom. Oh, okay. <laughs> I washed. Well, I... I washed. I, I, yeah, I took it for granted. Do you want to touch the sprinkles? Yeah, I mean, you're allowed to touch the sprinkles. On the one hand, I really do want to touch the sprinkles. Uh, yeah. But I mean, is that cool for us to just stick our hands in the food? 
Oh, no, I got gloves. Here. Oh. <laughs> right glove, then left glove. I just oh. like narrating out loud what I see. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that. Right glove, then left glove. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And now I can just stick my hands in the sprinkles? Go wild. Go right. nuts, man. Mm. I gotta say, um, mm. the gloves really cut down on the uh, sensation. <laughs> it's like I'm not doing anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. You know. How old are you again? I'm four. He's I a really know, stacked I'm, four, I'm, though. Look at him. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a great shape. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, those sprinkles with the gloves, it's like unrequited love. <laughs> I think of love, I ponder it day and night. Does he love glazing those donuts? I mean, it's okay. But... <laughs> Does my dad love sprinkling the donuts? Anytime, Dad. Oh, uh, I mean, you know, I, I could be doing other things. Yeah. And isn't that what love is? Well, I mean, look, you're a tiny... Let me take these gloves off. Oh. Oh. Listen, you're a tiny child. You only know so much of love because you've only been alive for four years. But we just got married. We know what love is. Yeah, it's doing other things. Chaz. No, I just mean like he said. In our marriage vows, do you remember what we said? Of course I do. <laughs> I, Chaz? I, Chaz. I, Chaz. Some call me Charles, Charlie, Chuck. Not Chucky, but mostly Chaz. Am so honored to be marrying you. Dirk. <laughs> I love you, Dirk. I promise to never stop loving you. I, I promise to love you until the rest of my days, the rest of your days, all of eternity. But I definitely know that at some point in there, to keep things fresh, we're gonna need to do other things. <laughs> Chaz, this may sound horrible to say in wedding vows, but I kind of spaced out there for a moment. <laughs> and I missed some of the stuff you said, but I love you too. And I promise I'll listen closer in the future. <laughs> and I wish that I had taken the time to write out my vows. I... He's oh, got a point. Yeah. Really wasn't paying attention. <laughs> it's okay. You know, <laughs> it's okay to ponder these things. Sometimes there's no answers to love. I was first introduced to love when I saw that movie. You know, Michael J. Fox gets into a DeLorean. That movie. Was that the title of it? I think that's what it was called. Yeah. Yeah. Michael J. Fox gets into a DeLorean. Yeah, I, I saw it. Yeah. yeah. It was a double feature with uh, human-like reptile people who know karate. God. That took me a minute, but I got it. Not me. I'll be deciphering that all night. Well, yeah. 
I mean, you could think about it, but it's not worth it. <laughs> Johnny, what about you? D do you ever think about love? I did once, but I don't anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, should I try and fall in love? <laughs> no. <laughs> your conclusion no <laughs> are you sure <laughs> I mean maybe I should though fuck no <laughs> fuck no <laughs> he said a bad word daddy <laughs> you've heard that word before yeah. I mean, the labor laws that are being violated just by you being here. I think language is the least of our problems. I'm really curious what the president of the company thinks of me working at the donut shop. <laughs> Mr. President. Yes. It's me, the president of the donut company. The king of all I survey. Oh, gee. We what? didn't expect you so soon, Mr. President. I got here as quick as I could. It's very difficult for me to walk anywhere. Oh, darn. Well, the other secretaries and I haven't prepared your poultice. All of the <laughs> Did all of the secretaries contribute this time? Well, we tried, but Brenda fell down that well last year, and just no one ever cared to find her. Sheep. Brenda never should have been in no man's land. It's true, we all tried to tell her that and wearing rouge. Brenda. Well. What's it looking like as far as personnel out on the floor? Oh, it's fantastic. We have Johnny, who might be an escaped convict, All but he's right. great at glazing. Good. We also have a father. Felix, you mean? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, the only father who works at the company. Yep. <laughs> what a weird coincidence that all of our other male employees are completely Just impotent. sterile, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I thought it was a requirement you had. Just a coincidence, isn't that weird? Yeah, I mean, it's it working out great. It's easy to identify Felix. It was also weird that they all readily volunteered that information. Yeah. I think they were trying to take back the term. Sure. Just Who like, can blame I am them? sterile. You can't define me. That's right. But you can. They're sterile. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Anybody else of note? Um, well, I can't think of... Oh, of course. Our employee of the month. Who? He's four years old. What? Oh, no. what? <laughs> so... Because I really love working here. And we Dad, love having you here. You've taught me something so important. You're the most driven person I know. You make Michael Jordan look like a piece of shit. <laughs> You're just so driven. I can pull up all the stats on my dad. He wakes up at four in the morning. Yeah. He gets in the car. Yeah. He drives to work. Yeah. He doesn't even use ways because he knows a quicker way. Because yeah. he wants to get to work as quick as he can. Because yeah. he loves to work here because he's so driven. I love that about you, Dad. But, Felix, yeah. with all your drivenness, what about love? Do you have to do other things sometimes? I do, actually. I like to read books. Mainly about Michael Jordan and the 1996 Chicago Bulls. Is that a lot of books? There's about 10 more than you would think. 
also 11. Oh. <laughs> and unlucky Baker's dozen. <laughs> We're learning the industry terms. Baker's dozen. <laughs> Well, normal baker's dozen is like 13, right? right. Cause you make yeah. an extra one in case right. you mess one up. But here, we have such high standards. We only make 11 to remind you to just hustle harder. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Why is it called an unlucky baker's dozen? Because the, only the unlucky ones have to hustle. Oh my God. Did you used to hustle back in the day? <laughs> You got your, uh, you got your sp scooter there, huh? Yeah. Do you want to park it here on top of this child's playground? Four bucks. Yeah, four bucks. Four, four bucks. bucks? Four bucks, yeah. 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 Wow, uh, I, I guess so. I mean, ordinarily we charge you six, but since it's you, we do four. Four bucks, four bucks. What's what four bucks? Think? What's four bucks? What do you hey, think? Don't talk hey. to them. Don't talk to hey. them, man. Hey. What's four no, bucks? No, no. I get I'll give you, uh, I'll give three bucks. You can park it right inside that elementary school. They're about to go on lunch. They'll get a kick out of it. <laughs> yeah. I, I have a criminal record. I don't think I should do that. Oh, all right, all right, all right, all right. Well, you know, we can just we 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 can park it around the walnut tree, three fifty. Look, I, I'm just here to pick up my delivery order from PF Chang's. I'm hungry. <laughs> look, look, look. I tell you what. Leave your scooter right here. Yeah. I'm gonna ride it around. You give me two dollars. I won't steal it. <laughs> all right. That's the best deal I've heard so far. Counter offer? <sighs> I really want to steal it. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's well, the worst deal I've heard so I would, far. I, this, this was an intimate conversation we were having here. Oh, sorry. I really want to steal it. Yeah, I want to steal it too. We're not going to steal it. No, we're not going to steal it. <laughs> okay. The last thing we would do is steal it. Right. But we will charge you 225 to ride it around doubles. And then we won't steal it. <sighs> Boy, they're going to charge a quarter more and have two guys on it riding it around. <laughs> What do you want to deflate your tires with two motherfuckers riding on it? Come on, let me know. Hey, what do the it. fuck are you gonna do? Welcome to Joliet, bitch! Yeah. Oh! 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 Time to check in on my side business, the parking garage. <laughs> oh shit, it's the oh. boss. What's oh. going oh. on here? Oh. Yo. Oh. 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 This guy was good. trying to steal the scooter. What? I like you. Would you like to come work at my donut factory? Does sugar rain from the sky? Sometimes at the donut factory it does. Then yes! <laughs> so yeah, I had a hard life before this. In Joliet, Illinois. Ah, huh? Yeah, I used to I used to do that scooter business and lead uh, haunted house tours. <laughs> There's a lot of ghosts in Joliet. Oh. Uh, hi, yeah, I'd like a ticket for the Haunted House Tour. Good thing I still do it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh... <laughs> you know what? I have left a bunch of donuts, like, unglazed, just rolling down a conveyor belt. But for you, yeah. I'm going to show you real quick where all the ghosts are. And cool. then I've got to get cool. back before those cool. donuts burn. Ready? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so yeah. Yeah. there go a ghost, 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 there go a ghost. You got it? Bam, thank you. Thank you so Appreciate much. Appreciate it, yeah. Where did you just go for three minutes? <laughs> you were just telling us about your hustle. You know, a hustler never stops hustling. You were gone for 40 minutes. <laughs> well... I accomplished a lot in that time. We stood here in silence. <laughs> we don't know each other that well. Well, he's my dad. Yeah, well, but we, as a group, as a group. As a group, as, as a, a group. group. Yeah, that's fair. And you need me to keep you together? You don't know me. You're the glaze. You're the glaze. You're the glaze. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, the sprinkles, the sprinkles, oh, the sprinkles. Sorry. Hold on, hold on. All right, let's hug. Oh, oh, that was a close oh, one. Oh. I Chaz, I love you. I'm sorry we had such a weird day. 
And you know what? You're right. Even though we haven't been married that long, I'm already feeling it. We got to do some other things. You're speaking. <laughs> wow, what a freshly painted TJ Maxx. <laughs> we got a we got a men's section over there, kids section, women's section. And look, a pretty significant portion of this store is just unrelated items at discount prices. <laughs> just next to each other. Why, well, here's a candle. Here's some women's perfume. Here's a pair of men's gloves. Yeah, where they should be, on one shelf. <laughs> So is that debit or credit? Oh, TJ Maxx, I'm paying all cash. I don't want a record of the proof that I've been here. So, you know what? I'm gonna take this candle. Uh, what kind of scent is this? Oh, that's um, apple bottom jeans. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, weird. It smells like fruit in the 70s. <laughs> and... Chaz, you just started telling us this story about a time you went to TJ Maxx. It was unconnected to anything else. No. I'm sorry. Yeah. I should, I should be over here with Watch you. the sprinkles. I'm sorry. Oh, they're here. They're here. They're all right. Is this what you meant by do other things? Well, it was the first thing that I thought of. And it, it, it certainly falls under the category of other. I don't know, geez. At first you were speaking my language, Dirk, but now, now I wanna know what you mean by do other things. Well, I don't know, like. He's got to die. Okay, he will die. I will make it like no one no know. And there's nothing connecting the two of us at all? Nothing at all. Oops, I overheard it all. What? Oh! A ghost! Oh. Oh. A working class ghost! Uh. Oh. Look, you can see right through his hard hat and his lunch pail. Oh. I brought pesto risotto. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, and beignets, the typical working class lunch. <laughs> Hold on. I think when this man was alive, he must have been in the closet, and then he died, and until we get him to come out of closet, his ghost will never die. That I'm, makes sense. I don't know a lot of the nomenclature that you just used. Who the fuck's that nomenclature who is still worker? I retired after 45 years with a good pension and calluses on my hands, my feet, and shins. <laughs> How'd you get the calluses on your shins? <laughs> I'm working a machine with my hands. I'm leaning on part of the machine with my shins. <laughs> I'm moving back. I'm doing, repeating this motion. Oh, time flies. Oh, tough and, day. Uh, over here, this is where we get the steel. <laughs> and here's where they cut it. Oh, fuck, no one's on the tour today. <laughs> tell you what's nuts. 
I forgot a protein with my risotto. <laughs> Chaz, I gotta, I gotta be honest with you. This ghost and I, we, we have a history. Is it about that hit you were gonna put on someone? So you didn't get specific enough to tell me who, and I'm, I'm worried that it's Dirk. I'm, I'm worried, Dirk. Oh God, Dirk. I'm worried that, Dirk. I'm worried, <laughs> Dirk. I'm worried it's me. Chaz, no. Don't say the thing that I thought you were going to say, because it'll only turn out to be true. Ghost. Yes? <laughs> now that I don't have any secrets anymore, I think it's time maybe you don't have any secrets anymore. What? Ooh, ooh, but what I love the most are secrets. I don't want to give those up. You're, you're dead. Why? You might as well give up your secrets. It's okay. Hey, how did you get here? I mean, it's okay. I'm practicing a tour of the Lennon Museum. Oh, sure. And I'm doing it in character as it's good. Trotsky. It's really good. So, oh, so you'll give the tour in character. Was that? Yeah. Yeah. You'll yeah. give a tour of the Lenin Museum as Trotsky. Right. Sure. So I'm just working on my Russian. Sometimes yeah. I get it. It's a not little... bad. Thank you. I uh, привет. <laughs> no, that's not thank you. Спасибо. Спасибо. Sure. All right. Well, it's a work in progress. Sure. You're four. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what are you gonna do? Ghost. Ghost. Come on. All right. <laughs> But only because you asked me twice. <laughs> Did you know that about ghosts? Did no. you ask them anything twice? That was a total accident. They have to tell you. I did not know. I knew that. I have a lot of experience with ghosts, so. <laughs> I'll tell you one of my deepest, <laughs> darkest, spookiest, scariest, most confoundingest, strangest, most honest okay. secret. Right. I'm going to tell you a secret. Do it. About my past. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something about my past. <laughs> oh, what a tough day at the steel mill. Oh, honey, you seem all bound up inside, like your body's made of rocks and stones. <laughs> <laughs> Probably from the tension in my heart from working a job 60 hours a week and then coming home to this gruel that you call food. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I grew up in an orphanage. I love gruel. <laughs> it's fine. I'll fix you something else. How's slop? <laughs> slop gruel? I feel like the only things in this town available for a hard working class man in Joliet are slop and gruel. Whatever happened to potato pancakes or... Pasta. I don't know, sweetheart. I guess I'm just not gifted in the kitchen. What can I do? You seem like something's weighing on your mind. How about you let me go down to the pub, hang out with my friends, the men I truly love. What? What's that? I had a, a truffle. It was like nothing I ever had. They shaved it on top of the tagliatelle. God. You don't even know. I bet it sounds delicious. Oh. You know, when I'm at home pretending to be a hard blue collared man for my wife, mm, who I kind of stole from an orphanage. <laughs> <laughs> I just have such a hard time being myself. Oh, yeah. You boys at the pub, maneuvers in Joliet, Illinois. <laughs> Where men can be themselves. It's the best damn pub out there. Boy, Jacques. Yes. Jacques. Yes. I would never admit this to anyone else, but I have feelings for you. Yes. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave you two alone. <laughs> I have feelings for you and I need to tell my wife. And I don't care if, if she's upset. I don't care if she freaks out. 
Today is the day you die! Wow! Wow! Wow, so crazy. this guy just slit your throat. Pretty cool story. <laughs> but you kind of told the secret, I guess, in the story, which is you were being your true self at that bar. I was. And now you can be your true self here, Ghost. Isn't that right, Chaz? <laughs> Dirk. It's just that Dirk. I just want to say Dirk. Dirk, what I'm trying to say is, Dirk, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Chess. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and that is what the tour is really about. <laughs> it's not about donuts or donut holes, which we never even got to. We have amazing donuts. Okay. All right, I'm sure. Yeah, they're great. I'm sure they're good. I'm sure they're good. They're sure they're good. good. It's about finding your true self within the donuts. Are you a glazed? Are you an old fashioned? Maybe a Boston cream? I don't know. That's for you to decide. Two more examples. Are you? I'm here to honor playwright, scholar, at one time, very young boy. <laughs> on his award-winning new play, The Donut Factory. Based on his real life experience working in a donut factory. I will say, crazier than accepting this award is the fact that we're wearing the same, same clothes. This is crazy. <laughs> Hey folks, it's me, Mark Marin. And if you love podcasts, you don't want to miss, now hear this. A really big podcasting festival coming in October to the Los Angeles area. Come see me and lots of shows you love. More than 30 great podcasts live on six stages. It'll be a weekend full of laughs, storytelling, and your favorite hosts up close. You've got Earwolf favorites like Comedy Bang Bang and with special guest Lauren Lapkus. Plus more great shows like Brilliant Idiots, Criminal, and The Moth. And I'm doing a special WTF as well. Do a VIP pass for meet and greets with your favorite hosts. Sit up close in reserved seating. Hang out in the VIP lounge and get more special perks as well. It all happens at Now Hear This, October 28th through the 30th in Anaheim, California, right near Los Angeles. Don't miss it. Go to NowHearThisFest.com to buy your tickets. Okay? Good. Great. This has been an Earwolf production. Executive producers Scott Ackerman, Chris Bannon, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to Earwolf.com. 